Welcome everyone. I'm Zephy Davey. Thank you for coming on to our beautiful webinar. I just want to welcome you to the Ancient Healing Academy. This is a webinar of activation and initiation to the nine chakra. We are here with my wise women to open up your awareness to your higher self. We're ready to start with just initiating. The first initiation will be with Susan from, and it will be all the teachings and the, and the uh, beautiful, beautiful um, talk about the North. So Susan. Okay, can everybody hear me? Just a thumbs up, if you can hear me. Sweet, okay, so my name is Susan Mayer Houston, and I will be teaching tarot and divinations for the Ancient Healing Academy. And today what I wanna do is, because we are initiating and activating today, I wanna to initiate you into the Northern tradition because I'm so happy the North is back. It has not been represented we have plenty of other fields in the East and in the South and in the West, but the North is resurging and it has a voice and it wants to talk to us because it talks to us of the ancient ancestors. And in the Norse cosmology or the Northern cosmology, there is a tree and it's called Igrisil. And in that tree, there are nine worlds that branch off of it. So it's a massive tree and it connects to the cosmic tree. And these nine worlds talk of fire and ice and death and magic and elves and giants and dwarves and the mundane. And at the base of that tree is a well, it's the well of Ud. And the three women that tend to it are Ud, Vedandi and Skuld. And they are the weavers. And every day you feed your well something. How pure is it that you are feeding that well? Are you feeding your ancestors well? Because they spin and they weave your past, your present, your future. But it all depends on every choice and every action you take every day. Are you integrity? Are you feeding the ancestors well? Or are you dirtying the waters? That's what the ancestors ask of you. To be in your integrity, to feed them well, because that is your family tree, so to speak, and it connects with all the other trees. So I have pulled nine runes for today. And I, what I want you to do is just pay attention to the vibrations of the runes because the runes are a vibration that opens up different portals and different gates. And there are many different worlds behind each rune. I tried to find a deck that represented what my understanding of the runes are, and I couldn't find one. So I made my own deck and I used the soul cards to do it. So I will show you a rune and I will speak the vibration of it. And then I will show you the card that I feel represents the energy of that particular rune. So the first one we're going to use is Feu. Yeah, I don't know how clear you, you can see this. So it's Feu, Feu, Feu. Here is the card that's representative of it. You'll see its fullness, its abundance. This is the place where all the runes lie. It's also representative of, of uh, Freya. So some of you may have heard the term Freya, she's a goddess. But this is the one who holds the knowledge of the runes. They believe Odin brought the wounds down, but he had to learn how to read them from a female. And that was this particular card. The next room is Eo, Eo, Eo. And the card for that, hopefully you can see this is the tree and it shows that you are the roots of this tree. What are you feeding the roots? What are you awakening to? What are your gifts? The next rune is Perthro. And here's the card. And it shows three women. I don't particularly like this card's representation, but it was the best one I could find. And when I do readings for people, I often, when I get this rune, talk about what gifts 
do you have in that magic pouch? Because it's also a pouch. It's what you carry with you throughout your entire lifetime. And you're always adding to your pouch. The next one is Algiz. Bring this one up here. Algiz, this is your self-worth. How deep are your roots? Can you tap into those roots? What do they tell you? As you can see, this is a person that's sitting and thinking about that. Because that is all your ancestry, deep, deep, deep down within you, is your ancestry. The next rune is Nauthes. And here's my representation of this. I love this card because it's that deep need. You're all here because there's some deep need within you. Something wants to be remembered. Something wants to be reclaimed. And it's this willingness to look into your deep subconscious and pull back what it is that needs to be remembered. The next rune is Isa. Isa. And Isa is that stillness where you allow it to fill you. If you're busy all the time, you can't hear the voice of the ancestors. So you need to take that time to be replenished, to be filled, to allow those voices to come through. What gifts is it that want to come through for you? And then the next one we have is Ansu's. Ansu's. This is where we get to the voice of God, the mouth of God. What is it that wants to be heard? What is it that wants to be spoken? And that's where your part comes in because you don't wanna be an, a bystander. You wanna participate with your ancestors and what is going on, particularly in these challenging times. The next room is Kenaz. And here's the card for that. This is where your passion is lit. This is where you start having those light bulb moments where it's like, oh, what is it now? What is the energy that I can tap into that wasn't there before? What is the remembrance for me? And the last room is Degas. And it's about transformation. That's the initiation, the degas. So tap into the vibration of these runes. See what they hold for you. What is it deep down in the subconscious that wants to be awakened? What gifts and skills are lying there waiting for you that the ancestors have been holding for you? And I think that's it for me. Thank you all for being here. And so I'm going to pass you on to Suzanne for the next initiation. Thanks, Susan. That was amazing. I was taking notes just for myself. So I love that you talked about the pouch of gifts because that's really what you're going to end up with at the end of this um, course. So what I'm going to talk about today is the pathwork to healing, which is the circuitry of the cosmos. So we're gonna start with the chakras and I know most people have an understanding of the chakras, but I wanna give you a deeper understanding. I want you to come with me as I uncover the secrets of the chakras and what they really are about. So they're the body's electromagnetic or auric field. We know what an aura is, we hear that term. And it's generated by spinning of the chakras and produces its own vibrational gradient structure. And that's what we see as an aura. As each chakra spins, it produces its own electromagnetic field. This field then combines with the fields generated by the other chakras in the body and produces the auric field. Each individual auric field is manifested via a combination of the energy of these three chakras. Generally, they are the first, third, and fifth, which empower the person's physical, intellectual, and etheric body. It is a combination of these three chakras that produces the primary auric field, the inner shell of the aura. So we're gonna open and clear this auric field through breath. And while participating in this breath work, 
we'll be clearing the dense stuck energy. So we're prepared to open the ninth chakra. So we're gonna start, we're gonna balance the horror line. So I want you to take your right hand in front of the third eye and the left hand will be under this way from the lower chakra. Take a deep breath, center yourself and pull the hands together. And then we're going to steeple mudra, which is enclose all your fingers, the index finger straight, thumbs over one over the other. And we're gonna reach straight up and we're gonna breathe through the nose rapidly for about a minute. Take a deep breath in and exhale and breathe. Deep breath in, open the arms out to the side, exhale. And then we're gonna steeple mudra again, but the hands behind the back, the pointer finger facing downward towards the earth. Do the best you can, you can stand if you like. Take a deep breath in, exhale. Breathe rapidly through the nose. It's okay to feel a little dizzy. Just keep going, do your best. Inhale, exhale. And one more time, we're gonna reach up. Steeple mudra. Deep breath in. Deep breath in and breathe through the nose. Inhale up and release. So this is just one breathwork practice that we'll be working on in my course. And this is something you can do every morning to activate the horror line, to center yourself, to prepare, to open up to your meditation. It works really wonderfully for opening up all the capillaries as well. So I'll be working with breathwork, shamanic tools, shamanic work and energy work and, and with the Ancient Healing Academy. And uh, thank you for listening. And I'm going to pass you over to Kathy. Hi, um, I'm Kathy Hartenstein. And my focus is on emotional healing and transformation through a combination of Eastern ancient energy techniques and Western modern psychological concepts. Today, we're going to clear the etheric body and chakras through tapping. By clearing these energy centers, we'll be able to access the ninth chakra and open the portal to our connection with the divine. We're going to be using techniques covered in the Ancient Healing Academy from the process I developed called the Emotional Transformation Process, or ETP. And ETP is based in ancient Chinese energy medicine, NLP, visualization, EFT, and matrix screen printing. And it helps release sort of long held emotional blocks. ETP uses the body's energy system to release blocked emotions. So today we're gonna to clear the auric field and emotions building on what um, Suzanne just did, which was this great, wonderful opening. And basically we're gonna clear um, the auric field and emotion and beliefs that are held in our chakras and our energy centers. So tapping, which is derived um, from EFT and TFT, is a form of energy medicine based on the meridians and it works kind of like psychological acupressure. So by tapping on meridian points while experiencing the distress and also the positive realignment of your issues, your energy is rebalanced. 
So today we're going to do a three part process. We're going to do one round of EFT and then three rounds of chakra tapping and then a final round of EFT. And I'm going to take you through all the points we're going to be using today and you'll be able to follow along with me um, on all the tapping of point, points and then um, what I'm saying. So I'm going to say a phrase and then I'm going to leave time for you to repeat the phrase. So it's important to repeat because then you'll be activating each point with the energy and information of what we're saying. So before we um, begin, let me just go through the points here with you. So the EFT points start here on the karate chop point. Then they go to the top of the head, inside the eyebrows, side of the eyes, under the eyes, under the nose, the chin, the collarbone, underneath the breasts, underneath each arm, and the inside and the outside of each wrist. And then the chakra points are just uh, the first ones down here in the pelvis. That's our first chakra. Second chakra is right underneath the belly button. The third is right here in the solar plexus. The fourth in the heart. The fifth here in the throat. The sixth in the third eye. And the, top, uh, the seventh is the crown. So before we begin, I just want everybody to close your eyes, take a deep breath, and just do a quick scan of your body. And just notice if you have any tension in any of your seven chakra centers, tensions are, because we're gonna check back in with those at the end. Okay, so. To get started, we're just going to start here with our karate chop point and repeat after me. Even though there may be blocks in my energy field, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I am releasing all blocked energy in my etheric body. I am releasing anything negative that comes up in my aura. I am letting go of all cords, psychic attacks, old karma, energetic traumas, contracts to suffer, or anything else that keeps me from being in divine alignment. I am clearing and healing my whole energy field and weaving it with light and love. I am releasing and letting go of all negative attachments. I am healing and strengthening my energetic boundaries, seeing them grow stronger and brighter. My org field is looking so clear so white and so bright. I feel in the moment, one with the universe, full of love. And I know that I am divine. Now we're gonna move into our chakra tapping. So we start again here on this karate chop point. Even though I have trauma and emotions stuck in my chakras, I completely and deeply love and accept myself. I now clear and forgive my past pain and trauma, 
I accept any guilt and shame that I carry. I acknowledge any anger, resentment, and despair that I have. I accept my grief and my sorrow. I acknowledge the hidden hurts inside me. I acknowledge all illusions and limiting beliefs. I acknowledge my feelings of disconnection from the divine. I now feel safe and secure. I open to receive pleasure. I clear all fear of failure. I now let love in and I'm kind to myself. I know and share my truth. I now honor my intuition and accept my path. I open to the gateway to the energy of the universe. I now claim the right to be here. I claim the right to feel my feelings. I claim the right to act from my authentic self. I claim the right to love and be loved. I claim the right to speak and hear truth. I claim the right to see with powerful wisdom. I claim the right to divine knowledge. And then we're gonna do our final round of EFT. So coming back to this karate chop point, I am transmuting all impurities in my etheric body and replacing them with light and love. I am flooding my energy field now with bright white healing flowing light. And I let it flow. And I let my energy field expand out. I am a bright, white, sparkling being of light. I am releasing all blocks in my energy field. I feel my energy and vibration rising. I feel my chakras open, balance and expand out. I feel all the love coming into each chakra. My chakras are spinning so brightly, so beautifully. so clear of any blocks and all are free of any energetic defects. Aligned and in balance and opening to the ninth chakra. Now just close your eyes. And feel that energy in your body. And again, do a scan of those chakras and see if any of that tension that you're holding in any of those spaces has shifted or moved or opened. 
or is transformed. And thank you all so very much. Now I'm going to pass it on to Zephy for her meditation. Zephy, you're still muted. Yes, yes. I lost me for a minute. <laughs> I couldn't find me in the, in the wall. So um, thank you, wise women, for doing all this beautiful work. And now we're open for the meditation and ready to reach our nine chakra. First of all, uh, the nine chakra is actually uh, is connected to a place called the Bindu. And I don't know if you all have, have heard of that which is the back of your head. And that's where I'm gonna guide you. But first I'm gonna guide you through all the chakras and through the eight. So you can reach your higher self and then we're gonna come down to the Bindu. So if you're ready, just take your seats as comfortable as you can. You can lay down, you can sit on a chair or you can sit cross-legged. And um, normally the women sit with, a, if you sit cross-legged, you should sit with your left uh, leg, with your left uh, foot in and your right out. And if you're sitting uh, on the seat, don't worry about it. Uh, don't cross your legs at all. Just put them flat on the floor. And if you're laying down, the same thing. Your body should be flat and your legs should be open, not closed. So... Just remember, we're, we're women, so the left leg needs to be inside towards our, our area, our uh, feminine area, our yoni. So let's take a deep breath, and we're going to do 10 of those. And we're going to inhale from the nose, exhale from the mouth, and I'm going to guide you through that. One, close your eyes and... Just breathe beautifully the white light in and exhale everything that is stressing you out. Two. Inhale from your nose, exhale from your mouth. Three. Allow everything just to flow and do not think of any thoughts. Just allow the thoughts to actually move on. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Breathing is so important before we meditate because it clears our energy and it grounds us. 10. And now visualize a white light right above your head coming from the universe. And slowly it will enter your crown chakra, the top of your head. This beautiful white beam of light that coming from the universe is so strong that is penetrating your whole body, but slowly. It will take its time to move through the whole body. Allow the light to move down the spine. And take a deep breath if you feel like you have a problem moving it down. Even if you cannot visualize, that's okay. Just know that it's there. You can feel it. Continue moving it down the spine. And you take it all the way down to the sacrum. To the tailbone. And take a deep breath and push it through the sitting area that you are, through the pillow or through the bed or through the chair. And allow it to go all the way down to the earth. And again, if you're having a little bit of problem with that, just breathe through the nose and push it down through the sacrum. 
and reach the center of the earth where her fire is. And there the light becomes a huge anchor. And it gets you grounded and you connect it as above, so below. Take another deep breath and make that grounding as strong as you can. For us, for us to reach the higher self in the ninth chakra, we have to be very, very grounded. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the first chakra. And see if you have any emotions still stuck there after the clearing that we just did. It's very important to clear it, each chakra, as much as we can. Anything coming up for the ancestors, the first chakra is connected to our ancestors. Anything we're holding there, we need to have the awareness of it. And your first chakra is from your hips all the way down to your toes. Now we're going to move into the second chakra, which is from your hips to your belly button. And that's the chakra of creativity, of your sexuality, your sensuality. And again, feel the emotions, if any are stuck there. Now we're gonna move up to the third chakra. And it's from your belly button to your diaphragm. And that chakra, it's the self, it's I. My self-esteem, your self-esteem, and your awareness of who you are. See for a minute if any emotion is stuck there. And it's okay to have the awareness of those emotions. Don't be afraid of them. The lower chakras carry a lot of fear, but we're here to help you clear them. Now we're gonna go up to the heart chakra, which is from your diaphragm to your collarbone. Include your arms and your hands in your heart chakra because they're, your arms and your hands are extension of your heart. There, see if you have any emotions stuck there, any grief that you've been holding in your lungs and in your heart. The next one will be your fifth chakra. And it's from your collarbone all the way to your jaw. And again, see what kind of emotions are stuck there. The chakra is about speaking and expressing yourself. Then we're gonna to move to the third eye. And it's from your nose to where you, above your eyebrows. 
is the sixth chakra. And that's your intuition. And that is your connection to who you are. So the true you is your intuition. We have doubted our intuition for many, many years. Now we need to open it up and feel. And see what's stuck there, if any emotion is stuck there. And then we're going to move up to the crown chakra, which is the top of your head. And there is your connection to the divine. And see if you have any thoughts that are stuck there that you really don't want in your life anymore, any negative thinking. So actually the crown chakra can open. And now right above your head, see your higher self, which is your eighth chakra. Actually see you, because that's where the higher self is, as a bright being full of clearing full of light and none of the lower vibration emotions are attached to it. And now as your higher self is sitting right above you, and it's helping you through this process to open up the nine chakra. Just visualize then the back of your head where the bindu is, the energy opens up and that is the nine chakra activation. It gets activated in the bindu all the way in the back of your forehead. So it's in the same lineup as your third eye. And allow the higher self to help you activate the bindu. Allow the knowledge of your higher self help you activate your nine chakra. And as your nine chakra gets activated, the mouth of God opens up so you can receive and digest all the information that's coming from above. Because we receive information, but we never can digest it through the whole body it takes time, and sometimes we don't even pay attention to that. So let's stay for a few minutes and feel the nine chakra gets, is getting activated. And now take a deep breath from the nose, exhale from the mouth. And know that your higher self is there and it's activated as your eighth chakra. 
and it will be there with you to activate constantly the nine chakra when you're ready. Now take another deep breath. Slowly bring your eyes, open your eyes and bring yourself back. Thank you.